Hello and welcome to the Past Functional Skills Video Solutions for the AQA March 2020 Functional Skills English Level 2 Reading Paper. Before watching this video, make sure that you've read the two available sources in the insert and you've attempted to complete the paper yourself. Please note that Source A has been removed due to copyright restrictions. Section A, including questions 1 to 6, and question 14 in Section D are not included in this model solution video. Question 7. You are advised to use a dictionary for this question. In Source B, Hannah Jones says, Festival weather is unpredictable. In this quotation, the word unpredictable means A. Unusual B. Changeable C. Unpleasant or D. Dangerous Write the correct letter in the box. So this question is asking you to use a dictionary and to find out what the word unpredictable means in this quotation here. Festival weather is unpredictable. So we would get our dictionary and find out that unpredictable means not predictable, not foreseen or not anticipated. So our options here, unusual, well, it doesn't necessarily mean unusual. It doesn't mean weird weather. It just means that the weather, you, you can't tell what, what's going to happen. You don't know whether it's going to be sunny or raining. It doesn't mean that the weather's unusual. B, changeable. Well, yes, this is a, a correct answer because we can see that if it's unpredictable, it might be sunny, it might be rainy, it's changeable. It can change fairly quickly. C, unpleasant. Unpredictable and unpleasant don't have the same meaning. Unpleasant means sort of negative, nasty weather. Unpredictable just means that you can't tell what weather it's going to be like. And D, dangerous. Well, dangerous definitely is an incorrect answer there. Unpredictable weather isn't necessarily dangerous. Question eight. According to source B, A, festivals always last for three days. B. Festival was Hannah's first festival experience. C. Festival goers should not set up camp near a light. Or D. The best way to learn the layout of the site is to explore. Write the correct letter in the box. So here we're being asked to look at source B and identify which of these four statements is correct based on the text. So let's start with the first one. Festivals always last for three days. Well, if we have a look at the text, we can see that three days of noise in a muddy field is an experience not to be missed. But it doesn't say that all festivals last for three days. It just suggests that a festival might last three days. It's an example. So that's incorrect. Festival was Hannah's first festival experience. So we'll scan the text and look for any mentions of festival. So we see that Hannah mentions festival over here at festival, and she says it was her first experience without parents. But if we read the previous sentence, it says, Mum took us to Greenbelt when I was about five. And it's suggested that Greenbelt must be a festival because she says that it was fun and that is a key motivation for going to festivals. So Greenbelt must be a festival. She went when she was five years old. So her first experience of a festival was not festival. It was Greenbelt. C, festival goers should not set up camp near a light. Let's scan the text for any mentions of a light. Well, the text says, try to set up camp near something easily identifiable like a light. So the text is actually saying the opposite, that you should try to set up your camp near a light. So this is incorrect. And finally, D, the best way to learn the layout of the site is to explore. So let's look for any mentions of exploring. Here it says, simply exploring the site helps you find your way around. 
So the answer here is D. The best way to learn the layout of the site is to explore. She says that exploring helps you find your way around. Question nine. Use the, using the information in source B, put a tick in the correct box to show whether each statement is true or false. So we've got false statements here and we've got to decide whether they're true or false, incorrect or correct based on source B. So the first statement, Hannah Jones is not an only child. So here we're going to look for any evidence that Hannah is a, an only child. Only child means that she doesn't have any siblings. And it says here that when she was 16, she went with her older brother to a festival. So if she's got an older brother, she has siblings, she's not an only child. So that is true. Hannah Jones is not an only child. Hannah prefers single use plastic bottles. Well, no, she doesn't. It says that you should bring water in a reusable bottle, of course. So she thinks that it's obvious that people should be using reusable bottles, not single use plastic ones. So that is false. It's best to set up camp near a meeting place. Well, she says you should decide on a meeting place in case you get lost, but it doesn't say that you should set up your camp there. It says you should set up your camp next to something easily identifiable like a light. It doesn't say that the meeting place should be close to the camp. So that's false. And finally, Hannah did not enjoy green belt. So let's look for where she mentions green belt. She went there when she was five years old. She doesn't remember much of it, but she does remember how much fun it was. And that suggests that she, really she did enjoy it. So this statement is false. Question 10. In source B, Hannah Jones talks about her experience of festivals. List three things Hannah Jones loves about festivals. So in this question, we're being asked to find three things from source B that Hannah Jones loves about festivals, so positives about festivals. So if we have a look at the source, and we're gonna scan for positives. So she says that she remembers how much fun it was at the first festival she went to. So that's a positive, that's the reason she loves it, it was fun. She also says that she reveled in the whole experience of going to a festival especially the music. So that's another positive, another reason why she loves it. More reasons that she loves festivals. She says that the vast majority of people go to have a great time and let your hair down and have fun. So we've already mentioned fun before, it's mentioned here again. And she says that she loves the freedom and the chance to withdraw from the world for a while. So any of these answers would be correct. And the student here has mentioned the music and how fun festivals are and also the unique festival atmosphere. Now the unique festival atmosphere is mentioned here. It says that there is a unique festival vibe that you should embrace. So embracing something means that you um, welcome it, you enjoy it. So that is also a correct answer. Question 11. In source B, Hannah Jones gives advice to festival goers about staying safe and well. List three ways people attending a festival can look after their health. Okay, so here we're being told to look at the advice that Hannah Jones is giving about staying safe and well, and we're specifically concentrating on how people can look after their health at a festival, and we want to find three examples of this, three ways that they can look after their health. So we'll scan the text for any mention of health and anything that will keep people healthy, and a good place to find this is after this question here, what advice would you give to people? So Hannah says 
that you should locate the toilets and the medical tent where you can get attention with general illness or treatment of bites and stings. So she's saying here that you should go to the medical tent if you're ill or you should get treated for bites and stings in case your insect repellent doesn't work. So she's also implying here that you should bring in insect repellent with you. She says that festival weather is unpredictable. So the UV rays from the sun can be damaging and you need to stay hydrated. So she says that you should bring sunscreen and water to stay healthy. So the student here has mentioned that you should go to the medical tent if you feel ill. You should protect yourself from the sun using sun cream. And finally, you should get treatment for bites and stings. All of these have been mentioned in the source and they are all relevant to the question because they tell people how to look after their health. Question 12. You are advised to use a dictionary for this question. Source C states, the organisation is spearheading a campaign to persuade retailers. In this quotation, the word spearheading means A. Planning B. Leading C. Discussing or D. Funding Write the correct letter in the box. So here we're going to use a dictionary and we're going to use this quote from source C which uses the word spearheading and we need to identify what spearheading means. So which of these words will provide the closest definition of spearheading? Which of the words could be used to replace that word spearheading in this quotation? So if we look up spearheading in the dictionary, it's to lead or initiate. So planning is incorrect because that doesn't suggest leading or initiating something. It suggests preparing for something, putting steps in place. Leading, well, that's definitely leading, initiating. So that could replace spearheading in the sentence. You could say, this org the organisation is leading a campaign to persuade retailers, and it would have the same meaning. Option C, discussing. Well, discussing means to talk about, not to lead not to initiate and funding that means to pay for if you didn't know the meaning of any of these words you could have a look at them in the dictionary as well and decide that leading is the best option to replace spearheading in the sentence because it means the same thing question 13 source c states that the aif want to ban single-use tents to help reduce the amount of plastic at festivals from reading the source, list three other ways in which some festivals have reduced their plastic usage. So in this question, we're using source C. And we want to find out three ways in which festivals reduced their plastic usage. And we don't want to focus on the ban on single use tents because the question specifies three other ways. So we're not focusing on the tenths in this question. So if we have a look at the source, we can see that in the war against plastic, several festivals ditched plastic straws. That's one way that they've reduced the amount of plastic. There are no longer plastic straws. 2018 was also the first year of a pledge to cut down on plastic. Now, a pledge to cut down on plastic, is that a correct answer? No, it's not. And the reason for this is because a pledge doesn't, it doesn't give a solution. It's not an action. It's just a promise. It's talking about cutting down on plastic. It doesn't really mean that they're doing anything in particular to cut down on plastic. It's not a method that they're using. Branded reusable drink bottles were sold and reusable bottles promoted. So selling these reusable drink bottles and promoting them, that's one way of reducing plastic. That was an action that's been taken. Of the festivals taking part in this pledge, 40% banned the sale of drinks in single-use plastic on site. So we've got banning the sale of single-use plastic cups. 
and we're replacing these cups with reusable ones. So that's another way of reducing plastic. So the student here has written that they've banned the use of plastic straws and they've banned the sale of drinks in single use plastic cups. And then they've also written that they've sold branded reusable drinks bottles. So they've read the source really carefully and identified three ways that the festivals have reduced their plastic usage.